Welcome to Geared to Live, a weekly TV show brought to you by Choose Life International and the kindness of MTM TV. I am Dr. Donovan Thomas, president and founder of Choose Life International, and it is my delight to be your host once more. We are continuing our focus on the theme, Navigating the Holidays. And it is such a joy to have with me my special guest, Mr. David Geddes. David, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. An absolute pleasure and honor to be here. Having known you for so long, it's so nice to actually sit down and have a conversation with you on camera. Well, thank you, um, David. You know, I look at your resume and there are just so many things that we could focus on today. But right now, you are currently the director of the Office of Stakeholder Engagement, Communication, and International Relations at the Financial Services Commission. What a mouthful. <laughs> yes, it is quite a mouthful, quite a mouthful. And we have, fortunately, we have an excellent team that works in communication, stakeholder engagement, and international relations to make sure that we fulfill our mandate. Talk to us a little bit about what is the Financial Services Commission? What is it about? And then tell us about your own role in the organization. Thank you so much, Dr. Thomas. The Financial Services Commission was established 20 years ago, and it was established in the aftermath of turmoil in the financial sector. The non-deposit taking financial sector, it was decided needed some specialized attention. So. The government, in its wisdom, established the FSC, and it was established bringing together the Office of the Superintendent of Insurance, the Securities Commission, and then later they added private pensions to our responsibilities. So the FSC it regulates and supervises the financial services of non-deposit-taking financial institutions. And when we say that, we mean not commercial banks. We're not talking okay. commercial banks that take deposits. So you have securities dealers, you have the insurance companies, and you have private pensions. Those three main industries, and we regulate and supervise them. David, I'm certain that there are many people who are watching right now who have been bitten, who have gotten involved with some investments that just went wrong. It may have felt good for a while, the 10% per month or the 15% per month and then crash. Yeah. How do we avoid that kind of catastrophe? The first thing that I always say is check before you invest. Dr. Thomas, nothing could be easier, but it's very difficult. Persons are lured by the attractiveness of deals that are really just too good to be true. And when something is looks too good to be true, chances are it's not true. So we have we have a mantra that says, check before you invest. Check with the FSC, check on our website, call us, and make sure that anybody that you are giving your funds to, that they are licensed to give investment advice, they are licensed to sell securities, that the product that they are selling is licensed and registered by the FSC. Because you could have somebody that's licensed to sell securities, you know, but then they're also selling something that's not registered. So we don't want that either. So you close the loop there to make sure that those products are registered. You know, I had a man who came to me some time ago and said to me, you can remain there being skeptical. I am making money while you are being a skeptic. Yes, and you, he probably may make money for the first month or two at that 10% that, that people talk about are 15%. But we've even had circumstances where persons are saying that you can earn 20% per month. You and I know that that's not realistic. There is no foundation for any investment currently that would give you that kind of legitimate return. We're talking about legitimate investments. No. 
So what happens usually is that you have a set of persons and they throw in money. And then those persons have to now recruit other persons to come in and put in money. And then they get a return on their money. And then the next set that comes in, they have to recruit more persons and then they get some investment. So maybe the first four, five, six layers of persons, those tiers, they may get some money. And a lot of times they end up putting it in back and that's where they lose everything. No, and I'm not saying that you should go in, get it and come out. You shouldn't go in in the first place. That's, you know, let's be clear on that. But everybody then has to bring in other persons in order to secure their money. Any investment scheme that requires you to bring in other persons, stay far from it. Wow. Walk, not even walk, run away yeah. from it. It's a case where not everything that glitters is gold. Most definitely. And you know what has happened? We have had a lot of, we, we have had, I mean, I mean, we can think of two major scenarios, uh, two major episodes where we had persons investing millions and millions of dollars and losing millions and millions of dollars. Some people well, selling their own, their homes. Definitely. Are, but you, you know what is even worse? And I mean, I know somebody that, I mean, well, it wasn't only that alone. He had some other problems, I think, like gambling and so on. But that's, that's another matter. But I know somebody that actually killed themselves. And I know that is dear to your heart, that whole suicide thing. He didn't choose Sorry, life. sorry, sorry. Let's yeah. carry that. Suicide prevention, so is there right. to my heart. Yes. Not suicide. Yes. Right, yes. Suicide prevention. Very true, yes. And he didn't choose life, he chose another way. And you know, the fact is that so persons persons were just faced with some mental pressures and challenges, a loss of huge amounts of money, loss of home, loss of a lifestyle that they have become accustomed to. Yeah. Really unfortunate. And, and we have had to intervene in some cases yeah. where bad investment resulted in the death of family members by suicide. And we have got to be involved with the, in the lives of family members who yeah. have suffered because yeah. uh, they have lost their loved ones in this kind of way. So we are issuing a caution. It's Christmas time. Christmas in the air and all of us want to have some extra dollars. Be cautious. Check it out. Check before, before you invest. Check before, check you, before you, you invest. You invest. Yes. David, you come to this position with a, with a whole long uh, line of experiences. You worked in Guyana. What, what was that role in Guyana? Okay. Uh, the, of, uh, the organization of Caribbean utility regulators, OCUR, which is a body bringing together regulators from Barbados, Guyana, Trinidad and Tobago, Anguilla, and a host of other Caribbean countries, they formed OCUR. And I was the chief executive officer for OCUR. OCUR is headquartered in Guyana. So, you know, I had to be in Guyana. Now. But I also had to be in Trinidad, Barbados, Jamaica, because, you know, a lot of the regulators are there also. So it was a lot of regional traveling for OCUR's business and international for, you know, stakeholder relations. Right. So in terms of your formal training, tell me what are some of the things that you have studied? Okay, well, very, very first off, the first thing um, I did was I went to CAST. If persons who may not be familiar with CAST, that's um, UTEC now. <laughs> I went there. I didn't complete that. But Thank I you for started. that clarification. I needed that. <laughs> but yes, for those, for those young persons, you know. Yes, cast your bread upon the water. Can't forget that. Yes. Okay. Yes, my, my bread didn't float on the water though. So, yes, yes. yes. So I actually went there and I was studying business administration. And, but I didn't complete that. And then I went into the media and then I studied journalism at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. And then I also studied management, communication management at, uh, in Washington, D.C. Then I was back here in Jamaica, worked with several media houses, uh, RGR about twice, I think. Uh, Including and, being news editor? I was news editor, yes, at, uh, at Hot 102, at RGR, at, uh, I was at Love, that's where I met you. That's too. when I first yes, met you. Yes, right, yes. Uh, 
And I'm sure I'm missing some, but not looking at the resume. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, that, that's enough yeah, to just so, say a wealth of experience. Indeed, so you bring yeah. that to that to this position yeah. right now, your background in communication. Mm -hmm. But David, when I talk with you, I realize mm -hmm. that you failed mm -hmm. your common entrance exam twice. Oh, how did you do oh, such boy. a thing? <laughs> well, well, well. Let's go back to my first high school. And we want to say to you who are out there right now, you may be going through a difficult time academically right now, but you are in the middle of your story. Let's yes. hear from David. Okay, so I was at, well, I wasn't at Titrill. I was at a prep school called Hill Prep in Port Antonio, and my father was a principal at Titchfield High School, Mortimer Geddes. Uh, there's a trophy named for him at Boys Jam, um, Champs. No, no longer Boys Champs, Champs. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, Mortimer Geddes trophy. So, everybody just thought that, I mean, you know, well, I mean, you know, if he, if he's Mortimer's son, the principal son, I mean, I'm sure he's going to be very good at academics from a very young age. So, you know, well, I wanted to ride my bicycle and do a lot of other activities, uh, you know. I was thrust into taking, I think, the, the common entrance exam. That would have been like about eight or nine. And that didn't turn out too well. Fortunately, you didn't get any grade as to, you know, you got 40%, 30% or what. But it's a pass it or failure. Right, you know, it didn't pass. So anyway, notwithstanding that, you know, uh, my father and others thought that, you know, it would be good to start high school early. So I still went into Titchfield and... Uh, while I was there, you know, my father sat me down and had a discussion with me and I said, you know, you know, why don't you take the exam again? I mean, I'm sure you can pass this. I mean, because I mean, I'm, you know, I must stay there and I was reading, I mean, so many books. I mean, you know, and I mean, there, there was, I would say, a book, a set of books called Reader's Digest, condensed books. And there were some magazines at the time no longer come out again, Argosy. And I read all of them from, you know, front to, you know, cover to back, and I was just reading, reading, reading. So everybody thought that, I mean, yes, this should be easy, knock it out, man, out to the boundary. So, yes, yeah, so took it again in high school and failed. So, you know, the following year came about, you know, and of course, at that point in time, you know, common entrance, persons who passed the common entrance, their name was in the newspaper. So, of course, you, know, you grab the newspaper and you're looking and, you know, with great expectations, you know, to see your name. Well, you know, that didn't work out too well. So after the second time, you know, I think, I remember myself my right. I mean, I would know, I was still under 12. So, you know, I've, and I think you can take it up to 12. So I think my father, you know, suggested again, well, you know, you could probably take it again. I said, no. Um, and I put my foot down. I said, no, I won't take it a third time. <laughs> so, David, the point we're making here is that yeah. even if there's Failure in your life in early years, you are not a failure. Definitely not a failure. Definitely not. I mean, I have never thought to myself that you know, I have failed. I mean, I have not succeeded and I know I have to find a different path to get what I want to achieve, but I am going to achieve whatever it is that I set out my, I set my mind on achieving without a doubt. I mean, I'm always committed to that. And I want to tell you too, you know, I thank the Lord. I mean, I'm, I, there's no day that I do not get up in the morning and give thanks for everything. I mean, it, it's not that I mean I'm having a great time financially or anything now, you know. But when I see, you know, what is one of, one of my favorite mantras and, you know, I was looking at a program on television and more than one. And, you know, somebody was saying you know, how they went to the pinnacle and they fell and they couldn't even find money to go to the barber and so. And, very interesting program. And I wrote on social media and I say, you know, there but for the grace of God go I. Yes. It's something that I never forget. There but for the grace of God go I. The fact is that, I mean, you don't know what can happen to you. you know, just give thanks and appreciate where you are. There's always somebody worse off than you. It's Christmas season. The U.S. has just celebrated Thanksgiving. And I just hear a heart of gratitude just coming, yeah. coming across. And yeah. gratitude is a must. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with right now. I want to encourage you to just take time out to find one thing to give thanks for. Choose Life International exists to help you live physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And we are concerned about every aspect of your life. You may be going through a difficult time right now. 
You may want to talk to somebody. I want to ask you to just reach out to somebody and get the help you need. If you're in Jamaica, I invite you to call the 24-hour helpline operated by the Ministry of Health, 888-639-5433. You may call the Choose Life International Office to set an appointment to see a counselor, 876-920-7924. David, so you were telling me that the, the, your workplace now has a special project you're working on to get students being aware of the opportunities they have to invest. But well, before we go there, yeah. David, your, fa your father was with you. He was principal oh, at Titrefield yeah. High School. And by the time you got the third form, this man who meant so much oh. to you died. How did you deal with that? Wow, that, well, that was really a blow. Uh, fortunately, I mean, my mother was a very strong woman. She has also passed. And, you know, we had different discussions and so, and I spent one more year at Titchfield, I think, before I actually um, decided to go to Monroe College uh, with my mother. Um, she, you know, had discussed it. I thought it would be a nice change, you know, and it really did work out very well, I must say, uh, going, going to Monroe. But I want to share with you very quickly, if I can, something that just triggered in my mind a while ago yes. when, when you mentioned about, you know, father dying and so, and the whole issue of holidays and the whole issue of finances and so. When I was at Mono, I came home for the holidays, one summer holiday, and I was in the kitchen and speaking to my mother. I had become aware now and I was feeling more of a man and I was getting a little bit older and you know, probably about, you know, now 14, 15, maybe. Yes. And I was, you know, I was wondering, how are we managing financially? So, you know, I'm there in the kitchen and I was mixing some lemonade and I said to my mother, you know, how are we? How are you? And she said, you know, yeah, she, you know she's okay. And so and she said, but finance giving her a problem. And you know, I said, oh, I'm there imagining it to myself. Now I'm saying, well, boy, I'm wondering if I'm going to be able to complete school. I mean, my mind was going all over the place and I was really getting a little bit, you know, hyper and worried now, you know, what's going to happen and how bad are we? Do I have to get a job? And, yeah. you know, so we're there and, you know, I'm saying, you know, I'm trying to get an idea of how bad it is. So I'm there mixing some lemonade and some, you know, some of the sugar fell on the counter. And, you know, she said to me, David, you know, I'm telling you about finance and things. And I'm saying things can't be that bad. I mean, a few grains of sugar. I mean, this is worse than I thought. And then you now she reached for, you know, um, at the time I think it was big on her, so and she sprayed the counter. And she said, finance. And I realized she was talking about little crawling finance. <laughs> I thought she was, because of where my mind was yeah. worried about things, I was thinking finance. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah. you know, so in every context that you're in, you know, communication is very important, you know, because for me, I could have sworn that things were bad and we were talking about finances collapsing and everything. She was, her mind was on ants giving her problems and I'm, you know, spilling, spilling sugar, sugar on the counter. So in everything we do, must always bear in mind that context when you're communicating, you know? Yeah. You know, it must have been a, a very difficult time for you just navigating life without your father. Your father was such a significant part of your life. And you may also have had the same issue of the loss of loved ones. I want to ask you to reach out and get help. Choose Life International offers online support. In fact, we provide a webinar yeah. for persons entitled Helping People Grieve in a Healthy Way. So whatever country you are, we can come to you in, on Zoom or otherwise to be able to help you deal with your losses. And Christmas season is a tough time for people. As they go through this time, there's an empty seat at the table, yes. so many loved ones. And we express our condolences to you who have lost your loved ones this past year. We care and we pray God's blessing upon you. David, let's talk a little bit about the special project, uh, reaching out to students that the Financial Services Commission has been going on now for the last 10 years, but there's a competition that is taking place that okay. 
We have what's known as the school's financial education program, SFIP for short. And over the past 10 years, what we have done is invited about 20 schools to register. And thanks to the assistance of Junior Achievement Jamaica, the teachers are trained and they roll out an extracurricular activity of budgeting, understanding credit, finance, etc., um, entrepreneurship. And those are modules that are taught to the students so that they can learn and be financially literate, that they can make decisions from now that will impact their tomorrow, that tomorrow when they're making decisions, they have that foundation of being financially literate. They understand the concepts of saving. They understand the concept of creating wealth. They understand the concept of insuring their assets. They understand that you must plan for retirement. All of those are critical things that they need to learn, and we teach them those uh, principles. Now, this year, we're doing it a little differently. Come January 17, 2022, that's just a matter of weeks, we will open registration on our website, and that's www www.fscjamaica.org. When you go on that website, you will be able to register after the 17th of January. You'll, as a teacher, you'll be able to register. And when you register, that allows the students at your school to do the research and you'll get a link to different websites, different information, and the teacher can coordinate their research. They are then able to enter an essay competition. Okay. And the essay competition, the theme of the essay competition is financial inclusion, savvy, and safe. And we will take, the teacher will, from each school will submit the top three essays, and we're going to have awards in the three counties, Middlesex, Surrey, and Cornwall. So we'll have first prize, second prize, third prize in each county. And the students will get some really nice prizes. And the teacher of the student who won one of any of those prizes will also get a prize. And I want to tell you, too, that the teachers who, the first 20, I think it is, teachers that register online when the registration opens on the 17th of January will get a stipend also paid by the FSC. Oh, sorry, and I should mention that the schools that the different students attend will also get a prize. So the teacher will get a prize, the student will get a prize, and the school will get a prize in okay. our school's financial Great. education program. You know, I just wish I was more educated about the financial world from when I was much younger. I used to think as a teenager, I'm not going to be around by the time I, I, I am retired. So I didn't mm. even think about those things. Mm. In fact, I, I said, you know, Jesus is going to come. Um, yeah. early, and I was more focused on being yeah. caught up in yeah. the air to be with Jesus. Yeah. But now I'm close to retirement, and that's the reality. And I want to say to all of you that are out there, while you have life, think about the future. Do the investment to be able to ensure a better tomorrow for yourself and your family. Choose Life International. Exist to help people live physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And we are grateful to you, Mr. David. Geddes for having been our guest today on this program. Certainly you have shared a lot um, with us. We invite you to go to the website www.fscjamaica.org and be ready yeah. to benefit from this competition. And I, and I must up. say, you know, um, Dr. Thomas, that it's really an honor to be sitting here with you because when I was at Love, I mean, I saw a lot of the great work that you did up close and personal. And I think that, you know, it's really great. You've been doing a great job with the counseling and with working with different persons. I think, you know, that we owe you as a country, we owe you a lot. Thank you mm. so much, Mr. Geddes, for being my mm. guest today. And I didn't pay for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can take that money and invest it. <laughs> All right, great. Thank you. Choose Life International is pleased to help you live a wholesome life. We believe that 
it is important to display the kind of lifestyle that Jesus displayed. He increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and man. I want to ask you, be very deliberate about bringing balance to your life. Right now, we're going to pray for some persons who are out there struggling. Some probably have failed exams. Probably have lost their father or mother or some loved ones. Probably have made some bad investments. We want to pray for God's intervention in your life. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to share in this manner. Thank you, Lord, for the wealth of experience of my guest, Mr. David Geddes. Thank you for the ways in which you have ordered his life. Thank you, Lord, that he represents hope. Thank you, Lord, for his own commitment to ensure that there is thoroughness in investment, that people uh, do not act quickly without wisdom. Pray that you'd bless him and bless his family. Just be there for him. Lord, I pray over my, our viewers right now, those who are hurting because of failure, those who are hurting because they have lost loved ones, those who are hurting because Christmas is around the corner and they do not see the funds that they would like to have. I pray for support. I pray, Lord, that you'll throw your arms around them and help them to know how much you care. I pray your blessings upon all our viewers today. As we say thanks, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You've been watching Geared to Live, a weekly TV show brought to you by Choose Life International. Every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. with rebroadcast on Saturdays at 6 p.m. We also want to invite you to join our weekly Zoom forum every Sunday at 5 p.m. and every Monday at 6 p.m. Yes. It's two forums every week, free of charge. Since COVID-19, we've been doing this, and we are now gone 168. We invite you to go to our website, learn some more about what Choose Life International is doing. Benefit from the knowledge deposited through these webinars on our website. We want to encourage you to invite somebody to the webinar coming this Sunday and Monday. 516-152-2200 with password Choose Life. See you next week. Same place, same time. Shalom.